Today, we are honored to have sincere conversation with Mrs. Anamika Bharti, spouse of His Excellency Ambassador of India to Ukraine. Mrs. Bharti often creates unifying multicultural events filled with warm-hearted and hospitable atmosphere. We will get to know what inspires Mrs. Bharti to give rise to such kind initiatives and to study universal grains in world cultures. Hello, Mrs. Bharti. We are the participants of Alatra TV and Alatra International Public Movement. And our goal is the revival of spiritual values in society. Kindness, love, unity among people. And today we are very grateful that you invited us. We noticed that atmosphere in all such meetings is very friendly, very warm. How do you create this atmosphere? Does it come from inner world? the warmth or the love or the affection that you feel, it is actually inside you. I always say that, you know, people tell me that you are a very warm person, very friendly. I said, yes, but you know, it is inside you. It's inside you. I'm just a medium and I am happy. That is why I can give you happiness. You know, in India, we say that whole world is a family. We consider My husband, me, and even our prime minister keeps saying that India's old Sanskrit saying is that the whole world is a family. And in Sanskrit, we say Vasudhev Kutumkam. We say that person with small mind, small heart, this is mine, this is yours. Mm -hmm. But if you have a big heart, the whole world is a family. And For me, personally, family means not only people. For me, trees and plants and birds and bees and animals, everything is a family. That's why you will see in my garden so many flowers. I have come to live here, so I want to make it come alive. So now you will see life in my garden, in my house. And it is all because I love Ukraine and I love Ukrainian people. Is tradition of hospitality reflected in Indian culture? Yes. This is deeply rooted in Indian culture and tradition. So we have the saying which says, Atithi Devo Bhava, God is there in the guest. So warm mm-hmm. and interesting, thank you. And we know that you are an art historian. Oh, yes. We would like to ask you some questions about Indian culture, art. As written in a Latra book, which is like an encyclopedia about human and nature, they're written that signs and symbols play a great role in life of people. And what are the main signs and symbols in Indian culture? Hmm. Actually, you have asked many questions in this. Ancient Indian culture, which is still there in India, it is one with nature. Mm-hmm. So. In our system, we have incorporated all the symbols of nature and we have created some more symbols. Because I'm an art historian and I started it after leaving my government job because I fell in love with the subject. Before that, I've been to all the museums in Europe without knowing much about art, art history, and about all the famous names. I went to see Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. I went to Rome, I went to France, uh, without knowing much. So when I went back to India and I started my course, master's degree in art history, I rediscovered my own roots. Mm. I know India is a cosmopolitan culture in the sense that in India, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, different other religions lived happily. We have lived together for centuries. And why is that? Because we respect each other's culture, we respect each other's symbols. All civilizations, even Christianity, started with symbols. First, when people wanted to show Jesus Christ, they were not showing a face. They were showing a little lamb. Same in Buddhism, when people wanted to show Buddha, they wished to show something else, a tree under which he attained the nirvana and many other things. After studying my art history, I realized the importance of these things. And I am really, really very fortunate that I was posted in Nepal, which is India's neighbor. Mm-hmm. And my dissertation, my thesis 
was on uh, Buddhist art in India and Nepal and Tibet. Mm -hmm. So I studied a lot about Buddhist art in India because now in India Buddhism is not as popular as it used to be. Now it has spread to many countries. Yeah. It was very interesting for me to see how it has got converted into religion where there are many gods. You know, Buddha never said that he was a god. Mm -hmm. But you know, how it changes in China, they have uh, different uh, deities and different iconography. So I studied all that and after coming to Ukraine, I have fallen in love with some of your old traditional painting styles. For so, example? Uh, you know this in Chiki, near Ternopil, this village. Uh. There are four masters only left. My teacher is one of student of these four masters. I learn how to do that. It is done on the walls of the houses. It used to be done. In India also we have that art. So I want to make a comparative study because in villages people were very simple, you know, everywhere, everywhere in the world. And the motifs that they use are generally taken from nature. All those things are there in my paintings, you know, I'm learning. So I'm very happy about that. The motifs and the symbols in Ukraine are also very enlightening. And what about the symbol of lotus, lotus flower? It's very really simple, you know, we, in ancient times we used to have so much of pond, water bodies full of lotuses, water lilies. So it was so natural. Ancient Indian sculpture, which is from 2400 years back, we used to have sculpture or the decoration on the walls of the palaces or the temples where we used to have a lot of lotuses. Lotus, it is said that it is one of the favorite flowers of Buddha. Mm -hmm. You can see my Buddha there holding a lotus flower. Mm -hmm. In Hindu mythology also, the goddess of wealth, Lakshmi, mm -hmm. she sits on lotus. I mean uh, something clear coming from inside, like grows from dirtiness yes. and it is a inside. symbol of purity. Purity. That you can live in, you know, all kinds of not good things in life, mm -hmm. but still you can remain pure. It doesn't matter what is surrounding you. What matters is what is inside you. And if you nurture it properly, correctly, you will bloom like a flower. Mm -hmm. So said, lotus is uh, our national flower. We know that the knowledge about creative feminine forms is uh, expressed in Indian culture. For example, Shakti, the images of Lakshmi, Saraswati. What does it symbolize? We have the holy trinity, Lakshmi, Sarvasati and Kali. We have the concept of mother goddess like you have in the ancient Greek culture ancient Mesopotamian culture or even ancient Egyptian culture. Everywhere, mother, matri, you know, the root word is matri, which is a Sanskrit word. And this word you can find in any, every culture. The worshipping of mother goddess has always been there in all cultures. In India, we have also given respect not only to mother goddesses, mother goddess, but we have many mother goddesses actually, many incarnations of Mother Goddess. But we also acknowledge that all wisdom or knowledge lies in the hands of the Goddess. And we have one Goddess for that, Sarvasati. She is very serene, very beautiful. She plays a music instrument and she's embodiment of all knowledge, wisdom, all good things. Goddess Lakshmi, she is the consort of Lord Vishnu. We have one more goddess. Her name is Kali. She's supposed to be very strong. She fights with the demon. So we say that every woman has these three things in her. Inside. She's powerful. She can gain all knowledge. And she is actually in our culture, you know, mothers are more important than anybody else. Like in Ukrainian culture also. And first of all, she produces a lot of love. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I also think that I have a lot to contribute not only to my husband or my family, but also to India-Ukraine relationship.
And uh, one of our projects of uh, Alatra TV and Alatra movement is universal grain. Mm -hmm. And we ask several questions about uh, what universal grains uh, in all cultures, it uh, doesn't depend on nationality, religion. And how do you think, what uh, unites all people from all over the world? Very good question. And one should not just answer this offhand. One should think about it. And I'm sure you have thought about it. That's why you have come up with this question. I have lived in seven countries. Mm -hmm. And never in my life have I ever lived for more than four years in one place. Even as a child, I have moved always, you know, mm -hmm. with my parents and then with my husband. So I can tell you that all said and done, all, you know, we see all colors, we see all education, poor, rich, all kinds of people. But there are some common, there are some certain similar things. There are certain common features, virtues. And I think that, you know, to grow as a society, to grow as a person, we should not look into differences, but we should look into similarities. Mm -hmm. So when you ask this question, it makes me very happy that yeah. we are looking for common things, not looking for differences. Yes. Because the moment we start looking for differences, we start looking, oh, I'm better than that, or I, yeah. that person is, or that country is not so good, or I am so, my country is, or that country. No, it is true that we human beings all are same at a level. When I say this, I mean that we are human beings. We're not animals. Yes. We have Beautiful. thinking. We have heart. So I think that there are many common things. Common thing, one is people are looking for something and they never find it. And many people have emptiness inside. Because I think, you know, it's my opinion, that human beings have this greed. Greed to, to earn money. Mm -hmm. to earn name, fame. On a daily basis also, they want something, always want something. And then when they get that thing, they, they realize that they're not happy. Yeah. And what makes people happy? All people. Yeah. From that is what, you know, as an individual, as a mother, as a family person, as a diplomat, I've always thought, what makes me happy? You know, I can't say what will make you happy or you, because your life story is different. Mm -hmm. Your experiences are different. But I can think about myself, you know, what will make me happy? I often think that, you know, I am sitting in a foreign country, not knowing the language. So what am I doing? What makes me happy in Ukraine? I think that in life, there has to be certain constants. When I say that, it means that when you are a child, you want your parents to be together to be happy and to give the child time. When you're young, you're going in a college, what made me happy was knowledge. Mm -hmm. The more I learned, the more I felt happy. Then I realized that I'm a mother now and my priorities are my children. And I have this unique opportunity to go to different countries. If I am working in India and my husband is living in some other country, we will not have memories together. You know, everybody grows old. So I think I say to my husband that we should be able to look back on life together and share memories. If you live separately and if I live separately, you know, we will tell each other stories, but we'll not have common stories. Mm -hmm. So what can make somebody happy? It's a very, you know, specific question. I don't care about money that much, you know. If you don't bring me flowers, I don't mind. What I want is people to come and enjoy themselves. For that, I'll do something. You know, I'll invite people, I'll do things. For me, personally, I just want one constant in my life. You know, I always want it. Because, you know, the whole world can go here and there. It can turn upside and down. But you need one support in life. If I cannot get that support, at least I can be that support for somebody. So if you all think like that, not about 
taking, taking, taking in relationships or in life. What about giving? People say, oh, you know, friendship is so rare now, you can't find a good friend. Mm -hmm. But my dear, are you a good friend yourself? Yes, oh. start from yourself. Yeah, exactly. And our, you know, Mahatma Gandhi also said that be the change that you want to see. So I firmly believe that we have to look inward and see how best we can be. And as human beings, we are not animals, you know, as human beings, we have to be different. That is one, I think, common grain that all human beings have, first of all, the faculty of thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. So why should we behave like animals? We're different. And that is never to be lost sight of. We should never forget that we are not animals, we are human beings. Sometimes I feel that even animals are better than human beings, you know. But this is animal mind all of people have, which pushes us to irritate or to cry maybe. But another side, spiritual, is inside of us, it's our feelings. You know, what is the difference between a bee and you or me? Mm -hmm. Honey bee is born, goes to the flowers, gets the nectar, mm -hmm. comes back, And it's amazing that they come back to their hive, they give the honey, and the queen bee is looking after everybody. They are so tiny. But how do they do that? Mm -hmm. You know, because they are programmed yeah. by nature or by God like that. We are human beings. We are not programmed like that. We are programmed with a heart and with a brain. Yeah. We are different from animals. And I think people must remember that they are here for something else, you know, something beyond this, beyond this world. So I feel, you know, sometimes when I'm angry or, you know, sometimes when I'm upset or not happy with my life, you know, there are always times <laughs> that I start thinking of all the good things. Uh, no, no, this person has done this for me. This, you know, this situation will go after some time. So I console myself because I have thinking. You have positive thinking. Yeah, of course. Make it positive. Yeah. Because uh, when it's bad times, you have nothing else but good thinking. And what is the meaning of life for you? Meaning of life for me is to live, to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. I cannot live for future that much or I cannot live in past. Mm -hmm. I have to live for the moment. Who knows tomorrow what's going to happen to me? I think uh, we should not think too much about others. We should not think too much about ourselves. We should not take ourselves too heavy, you know. Mm -hmm. Just be, live in the moment, be happy, spread happiness. And I think smile is the best dress yeah. to wear. <laughs> So, I think I'm wearing the best dress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very so. interesting. And what is love for you? Love for me is what makes me comfortable. Love for me is that my husband can sit at that table and do his own thing. And I'm here, I can do my own thing. We give each other space. And we accept each other as we are. Mm -hmm. That's love. See, whatever happens in the world, people love their parents. Why? Because they accept them as they are. Yeah. You can fight with your brother, but at the end of it all, you will love your brother because you accept him. But husband and wife fight a lot because we don't accept each other as they are. You want to change me, I want to change you, or you're not doing something that I want. So for me, love is accept each other as we are. Love can be for a, not only for husband and wife, love can be for a teacher, for a student, for you know, just accept them as they are. For all the world, yes? Yeah. For, for all. Mm -hmm. And what is kindness for you? I think the biggest virtue is kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, you look very beautiful, it's just not important. You are very rich, it's not important. You're not going to give me your money, you know, so it's not important. You're very famous, maybe you are not happy. You know, it's not important for me. But a person who's kind, it touches my soul the most. And I think 
kindness is from inside kindness can be very big kindness or it can be very small kindness mm-hmm. you talk to a child sweetly it's kindness and it doesn't have to be acknowledged by the other person that you know you are kind you just, when you feel kind you feel beautiful mm-hmm. yeah I feel, I do that. You I feel, feel that. when you feel kind, you feel love inside. Yeah, and you feel so beautiful. Yeah. I think kindness is the most important virtue in the world. Mm-hmm. If everybody is kind and accept people as they are, you know, we will live in paradise on earth. Mm-hmm. The life would be just complete. But unfortunately, kindness has become very very small. That is why when you ask this question. I I I feel happy that you know you asked me because even in my own mind it was what it wasn't clear what is love what is kindness and all so thank you <laughs> thank you it's very interesting uh, to know more about indian culture your husband talked a lot on the ceremony of uh, the presentation of his book mm-hmm. he talked about uh, meditation mm-hmm. and what is meditation for you I think it's the it's, it's the best question of the day. Hmm? See, I am married to him for the last 29 years and uh, I don't do meditation. Why? Because I think that I am in a constant state of meditation. I don't go hyper or very low, you know? I don't go on extremes. I am a very practical, very simple person. who lives in the moment as i told you i don't think too much about others i don't get into any kind of negative thinking i'm not affected by people so i don't go on extremes and that is why i think that i am in a constant state of meditation all the time i also understand the utility and the advantage of meditation I live in the moment. I will be kind to my street vendor. I will be kind to people who I'm dealing on every day basis, and that's for me is uh, you know, everything. I respect my husband's theories also a lot, and he has really you know meditated and worked hard to achieve the level that he has come to, and the understanding his understanding of Indian culture, Indian philosophy, Indian, and the modern science is amazing. I just tell him that you know, you meditate, you do this, you. Do, I will just admire you. <laughs> Thanks. So. And uh, how do you nurture this uh, positive attitude to life? Uh, I don't know. I think you know we are born like that. We are born. Sometimes when you are very young. you see from your parents and your teachers certain things and you imbibe but at the same time you see that uh, two children of same parents are different yeah mm-hmm. so i think the positivity is there when you don't go into the extremes as i told you positivity also comes from you know when you are looking beyond issues not at people there is a saying you know that petty people think about people normal people or better people think about what is happening in the world and real good mind they think about issues about you know ideas mm-hmm. so i like to live there you know <laughs> in the realm of ideas then what people do to me or what i do to people is not very important important is what we are you know trying to achieve every day so interesting and so informative talk thank you very much you are very Harty. welcome and you know it all depends on the type of questions that you and your team you know prepares and asks i think you are very enlightened yes. and wish you all the very best the viewers of alatra television i'm so happy to be talking to you directly from ukraine from kiev amazing journey of life for me and ukraine has been my seventh country to live in i can vouch for the love the dedication and the sweetness of the people of ukraine and the alatra television are just beautiful they are not only beautiful they are smart also not only come to ukraine you know contribute more for this television channel and i wish all the very best to all the viewers of alatra television all over the world thank you thank you thank you so much.